Hey friends, Andrea here, and today I'm going to be making a pair of beaded earrings using some glass beads and some silver Bali beads. I have some faceted glass, some round glass, um, some check glass that has an AB finish on it, and some that's more like a crystal cut. And so just a mixture, and then I have some daisy spacers and some little hex spacers. Um, all of this material can be mixed in with whatever you have in your stash so it doesn't really matter what you have just as long as you're using your stash and I'm getting down to where I have very few things that are easy to mix and match so I'm having to get creative and use that and mix beads together that I normally wouldn't but it's good because I'm getting creative so to start with, let me just give you a materials list and kind of explain why I have this segmented. So this is the materials for the top leg, this is the materials for the bottom leg, and then this is the materials for the dangles that'll be on each. So um, each side will get its own little dangle uh, grouping, I guess you could say, of three. So um, I just kind of grouped them together because that's going to be a whole process. But uh, Basically, we're gonna need a pair of ear wires, which I have here. Mine are stainless steel and they are hypoallergenic. And I have, let's see, for the two top legs, I have four hex cut spacers. These are about three millimeters or so. So you could use anything that's about that size or you could use something smaller, it's up to you. I just think that they finish off uh, my little beaded legs nicely. So I have four for the top two legs and four for the bottom two legs and I just basically sandwich my piece with those. And then uh, same thing with these guys uh, for the bottom little uh, dangles. I'm going to put one on the top and bottom of all three of the dangles. So that's six for one side and six for another side. So if we do the math that ends up being 20. All right, uh, so you're going to need 20 of those whatever hex beads you've got um, or three millimeter bead that you've got. You could do four, you could do two, doesn't really matter. And then I have four total uh, eye pins. These are two inch eye pins. They're a silver tone. They're not silver, sterling silver. Um, and then I have for the top leg, I have two, four, six, eight, ten daisy spacers. These are four millimeter daisy spacers. Um, and then for the bottom leg, I have four daisy spacers, and then I have six more daisy spacers for the little bottom dangles. So what did I say? 10, six, and four. So that's another 20 daisy spacers. So you have, you kind of see where I'm going here with that. Um, and then for the top leg, I have two eight millimeter um, round faceted beads. Um, they're, I think they might be crystal. I'm not sure, but if they are crystal, they're probably something cheap. They're not Swarovski. <laughs> um, I have four filigree bead caps. These would fit like about a six or an eight millimeter bead. And then I have two of these beads that are sort of um, matte. They almost remind me of like a I don't know, sea glass effect, but they are clear yellow matte beads and there's, these are, ooh, I think those are six millimeters. Um, I have some six millimeter faceted glass in olivine. This is like a check glass. These are pretty easy to find most places. And then I have a six millimeter um, faceted glass or may, it might be crystal uh, in black. So I have kind of like the size smaller than this eight millimeter. And then I have two jump rings for the uh, top to connect to my ear wires. Okay, for the, my bottom, like I said, I've got my hex beads, I've got my two, um, I've got my daisies, and then for the glass, I've got two 12 millimeter glass faceted olivine beads, and I have two eight millimeter glass faceted I think these are like kind of swirly. I don't know if you can see how cool they look, but up close, they're sort of like a transparent and an opaque 
swirly thing going on. Anyway, those are um, kind of a rondelle shape. Um, so they're not a round, they're a little bit like a squashed round. And so, uh, yeah, that is what I had in my stash. You could use whatever you have. And then I have, I think these might be approximately somewhere between eight and 10 millimeter. These are Bali beads. They're sterling silver beads. Um, they're kind of like handmade. And I just, I'm trying to use up what's in my stash. These are really beautiful handmade beads though. They've got a lot of detail. They're really textured. So those are fun to add. Um, but you could use whatever you have, whatever spacer beads you have. You could kind of stack a bunch of spacers. And then I have two um, more uh, jump rings. These, I think, are four millimeter jump rings. I'm going to apologize now for the noise you might hear in the background because it's 3rd of July and in the U.S. that means that people are usually celebrating and lighting off fireworks in my neighborhood. So it's not a big deal if you hear it, but I just want you to be aware. <laughs> um, and then I have two larger jump rings. I think these are about eight millimeters and these are going to be attached to the bottom legs. And then I'm going to use these three kind of drop beads. These are faceted glass drops. I think they might be four millimeter glass drops um, in black. And then I have the daisy spacers and the hex beads. And then I didn't actually... I do have a few head pins, but I am really running low. And what I do have a lot of actually is um, like little pieces that get cut off of head pins or eye pins or whatever it is. And just a length of wire that doesn't have anything on either end. So instead of going out and buying head pins, I'm going to make them with this. And just kind of like to give you a preview of how that will look is I've got one that's sort of already made. It's really hard to see unless you're getting up close. So I'm going to try my best to get you guys up in there so you can see it. But so the, the tip is flattened and then folded over. And that makes just enough of... Uh, you know, extra kind of width that this little hex bead, if I can get one that has a hole that's going to fit on here, that these hex beads will not slide off. And so it makes a, it's like a pretty good stopper. So I'll show you how I can make those. But, um, so I have a bunch of those kind of pre, uh, partially assembled, uh, but I just wanted to show you that because it's a cool kind of hack. So let's get started on the first leg and I'm going to go ahead and take one of my eye pins here and I'm going to start assembling the first one and I'm just going to use one of my hex beads, one of my daisy spacer beads and I'm going to take one of my little bead caps and my black bead, my black eight millimeter and the other bead cap and sandwich it on. So far so good. And then I'm gonna take another spacer daisy, and pop that in between the yellow bead, the six millimeter yellow matte bead. I'm gonna do another daisy spacer and do this olivine AB finish glass. And then I'm gonna do another daisy spacer and do my black. And what do you think I'm going to do next? Another daisy spacer. Oh, I want to use this one here. Um, and then I'm going to finish off with a little hex bead at the top. As you can see, it's very, what do we want to call that? What's the word I would use for that? Decorative? It's on the fancy side. So that's the first leg. The first leg it's already going to be almost two inches long. So these are going to be some big mama earrings. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a wrap loop or not a wrap loop, but just make a loop on the end. So I'll take that 
right at the neck there and just give it a little bend. And I think I need to trim it just a little bit. All right, and then I'll go ahead and twist that over. I'm sorry if I'm not on camera, I'm just trying to get this close enough to my eyeballs so I can see what I'm doing and do it properly without having to tweak it. If you tweak it too much, kind of makes the wire a little less structurally sound, if we will. All right, so that's one leg done. I'm gonna just go ahead and slide a open jump ring. This one just happens to be open. I think I had to separate it from another little jump ring, that's why it's open. And slide on my little ear wire and close it up. And it's good to go. I am gonna go ahead and flatten that just because it isn't quite perfectly. There we go. I mean, you could, if you just had a head pin, you could just do something like this alone, but I need excitement in my life. So, <laughs> so now I'm gonna do the second leg and we'll get to see how these things turn out. So the second leg is gonna be uh, another hex bead, another daisy spacer, the big mama 12 millimeter olivine, another daisy spacer, um, my eight millimeter faceted yellow guy, and then I'm skipping a daisy spacer because I'm just going straight with this sterling silver bead, this uh, Bali bead, and then I'm going to, if I can get it, some of these beads are not big enough holes. They don't want to cooperate. There we go. So this is my second leg. It's already getting pretty long. As you can see, we'll, we'll kind of like lay them together so you can kind of see how it's going to look. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a loop at the top here. Not a wrap loop, just a loop. So I like to give it a little bit of a neck so that it can kind of move around a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim off what I think I don't need here. And make my loop. And that looks nice so far, so good. I actually sort of designed these and then didn't assemble them, took a photo and kind of like messed around. And then I was like, no, I think I like the original. So I thought I would just share that because uh, I feel like other people, you know, who are trying to get into designing their jewelry are kind of in the same boat where you might be like, what did I do <laughs> before? I can't remember that design that I really liked. And I, you know, if you're just messing around a bunch and you have to like leave your desk in the middle of crafting sometimes, um, you can lose place of what you were making and you might lose that idea. So anyway, I'm just hooking on another open jump ring and attaching my second leg. And I'm gonna close that open jump ring and you always twist that closed. All right, that looks good to me. So far, this mama earring is uh, looking really cute. That's it so far. And now I'm gonna do my bottom dangle. So first of all, I'm gonna open this uh, loop here, this jump ring, and go ahead, the big one, and attach it to the bottom. 
and I'm going to go ahead and close it. It looks good to me. And now I have to kind of assemble these. Well, remember how I said I don't have any more head pins or I'm running low on head pins. So what I'm going to do is I've got a bunch of these little cuts and I've taken them already and I've sort of bent them. We'll see if I can get this to show because it's really going to be tough to show what I've done here, but I've bent it just with my round nose pliers. I could have used my flat nose pliers. It doesn't matter, but I've bent it just a little bit. I just grabbed the very tip end and bent it. And then what I'm going to do here is take the very end here with my flat nose pliers. And you can see it's sort of a 90 degree angle. I'm going to smash it with my flat nose pliers. Using both hands, I'm going to smash it. And I'm not trying to damage it per se. I'm just trying to um, kind of reduce the volume a little bit and and then I'm going to bend it all the way over and just basically fold it with my flat nose pliers. And the reason I'm flattening it like that is because I want there to be volume at the bottom but I still want this little, whatever you might call it, head pin to um, not catch on anything and kind of be smooth at the bottom. So that's the goal. So now I can use this and if you can see that, it's kind of curled at the bottom. And it almost looks like a round, uh, like a ball pin instead of a head pin. It's, they have like a little ball on them. Um, so it doesn't matter to me because this is for my ears and I think it'll look nice anyways. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and string my one of my hex beads on. I'm going to do one of my daisy spacers and one of my drops, my black faceted drops. And then I'm going to top it with, oh, I don't want to top it with a daisy spacer. I want to top it with another hex bead. And that's one dangle. So I'm going to make a few more and I'm going to move these over because I don't want to make any more. I made a few already and I just need to keep kind of smashing them. So I'll show you that the smash process. It's not that much. I'm not doing that much. Just kind of getting it to where uh, it's, it's reduced volume a little bit. And I don't want to mess up with the uh, the structural integrity, I guess, of the of the wire. I don't want to make it so that it's it's so weak that it just breaks off. I just want it to bend a little bit over and kind of be a little bit flat right there. Um, and if you find that it's bent in a weird way, you can always just sort of like readjust it. But I'm not that concerned personally, so. Uh, let's go ahead and do another one of these and I'm going to do my bottom daisy, my drop, and my top hex. So I've got two and then I'll get another one of these that's already made just so I can kind of show you the final assembly. And I really wish that these beads had bigger openings because it can be a pain in my butt to sometimes I have to drill them. This little drill, by the way, uh, Beadalon, I forget what it's called. <laughs> uh, it is great. It is a lifesaver. I have been using it a lot. I don't know what I did without it. Okay, so now I have my three drops. I'm going to make another loop. So I'm going to take my pliers and bend just to give it a little bit of a neck. And let's see, I think I need just about that much. And I'll make another loop here. All right. 
And before I fully close it up and, and make it finished, I'm gonna just open that one little loop and slide it on here. And then I'm gonna go ahead with my pliers and close it up. I could have done it the other way. I could have like opened up my ring and close, you know, uh, strung these on. It doesn't matter. Either way, I, I'm gonna get the same final result. So it could, I could leave it this way if I liked it. This way I'd use a smaller jump ring, but I feel like that's just not, it's not, you know, in your face enough <laughs> for me. <laughs> And I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do three. And I did three because I, I did this in my kind of test. And I was like, yeah, I like how that looks. So we'll see. It might not look great to everyone, but it's my taste. I don't have a lot of hair. And uh, which actually I am growing it out right now. But I don't have a lot of hair to get in the way of my earrings. So... These aren't the best loops, but they <laughs> will suffice. Um, but it's it's sort of like when you don't have a lot of hair, uh, you tend to wear like bigger earrings than you do when you had hair. Because if you have hair, your earrings, if they're huge, they just kind of get in your way. Or they get, you know, in your hair. They get stuck in your hair. Unless you wear a lot of ponytails, maybe. And then you can really show off your earrings. But... Uh, that's just something I've noticed about myself is I tend to gravitate towards bigger earrings when I don't have a lot of hair to be tangled in it. And, um, and I think it also just, you know, if somebody was like maybe looking at you from the back and, and you don't have a lot of hair and you don't want to look like a boy, maybe that might work just to feminize you a little bit. <laughs> If, if you're worried about that, I mean, not everyone is, so. All right. And I've got my last little leg. I'm just going to go ahead and oh, fling it across my desk is what I'm going to do. Oh, I guess I just didn't open it big enough. That's why. I was, like, trying to put it on, and it was like, no, I cannot go there. <laughs> um, so... Go ahead and close that loop up. And then I, when I was pushing it and shoving it, I misaligned my jump ring just a little bit. I am going to go ahead real quick and just kind of push this together just a little bit. I'm sorry if this is a little out of focus. All right, so here's the final earring. I know that this is a big mama earring. So maybe not everybody would like this earring. It's also very bright. To me, this is like, I, I specifically made this, to be honest with you guys, to go with a certain outfit. I have a certain clothing item that is black and green, and it just needs a pop of color of something. And this is just one of the sets that I created that I will probably make, or one of the earring pairs, rather, that I created to go with this. Um, I will probably create more. Now that I'm looking at it, I almost don't know that it needs this huge uh, jump ring. I might swap that out for a smaller jump ring, but it, it does uh, kind of look the way I wanted it to look. It, it gives it a nice little ending. So, I don't know, tell me what you guys think if you like this earring or not. I'm gonna go ahead and make the second earring, so I'm gonna pause and then be back with my second earring and you guys can let me know in the comments if you like this pair or if you hate it, if it's not your taste. Alrighty, I am back. I um, picked out a different jump ring. I have a bunch of different sizes here and I ended up using a five millimeter jump ring on this earring when I assembled it. So I just wanted to show you, I'm swapping out this one that uh, I think it's an eight millimeter jump ring for a five millimeter because I think I just decided it just looks a little too large to me and uh, I wanted to keep it a little bit more delicate I guess is the way I would call that. So I'm just opening that up and stringing these guys on and stringing it onto this guy. And then I need my other pair of pliers to 
help me twist it closed. Um, looks good to me. Yep. All right, so I think that looks a lot better, but let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna put this back in the box so it can be used again. Um, so this is the final look at this pair of earrings. You can see it has a lot of sparkle, even though it's kind of black and dark colors. Um, the facets give it a lot of color and sparkle and catch the light. I really like the way that this uh, makes sort of like almost a feather look, I guess. It's kind of how I, I see that, but it gives it to me almost an art deco vibe, but it's still boho. It's like a peacock feather or something like fanned out at the bottom. And uh, I think that looks really cute. Um, when I was making it and I used a slightly smaller jump ring with a four millimeter jump ring, they start to sort of like group together and make a little triangle shape, which isn't bad. It's just not what I was going for. I wanted to give it kind of a fanned out look. And it might sometimes lay with that little triangle look instead. And there is nothing wrong with that look instead. That looks really cute too, but I just like that. So, um, I think these little filigree beads or bead caps that I had in my stash perfectly kind of accent that one sparkly bead. The only thing that I think it just potentially could use is if I had a slightly smaller size of this or maybe that bead, it, the leg would look a little bit less near, it would be a little sh shorter, I think. And, um, I feel like for the sake of the movement of the earring, that might be nice, but they will swing just fine. They will catch a lot of eye movements as you wear them. And I like big swingy boho style, you know, sort of tribal style looking earrings. I think this fits the bill. Um, like I said, I have a specific outfit that I would want to wear these with. I do have another um, plan for something I want to do with the, for us making something that will match with that outfit. And it's going to be black and green as well, but with a third color that I haven't yet decided on. Uh, just, this is an outfit. This is a piece of clothing that I typically wear. It has this olive green color in it and has black in it. And it's just neat. I usually wear it with a black top and I want to accessorize and sort of dress it up. And so it feels like in this case, the yellow really make, makes a pop. Anyway, I'm going to make a matching pair of, or matching set of a trio of bracelets. So, uh, stick around stay tuned maybe for the next episode and subscribe or like if you don't want to miss that video because I'll be making that one shortly so you can see um, how the whole set looks together with the bracelets and the earrings um, and then maybe I'll do some hand modeling for you <laughs> all right I hope you guys are having a wonderful day hope you guys enjoy your fourth of July I know this isn't very patriotic looking but it this is what I needed in my wardrobe this is what I had a hole a gap in my jewelry collection for so have a great rest of your day thank you so much for watching make sure to like make sure to subscribe and make sure to um, follow me on my social media pages if you want to see some of the other stuff I'm working on. Bye!